Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where I talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about Sweet Home Season 3, Episode 4. Great episode. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So picking up immediately after last episode where... Um, Yiki Young's daughter is awakening that thing, which I'm pretty sure is not this. Like I said, it looked bigger and massive, and we have no idea where that thing went. Maybe that was supposed to be the, the steroid or protein monster, but like, I don't think it was. It looked different. It looked, also, it looked much more massive, but maybe I wasn't paying as much attention last episode. There's some details I, I missed last episode, and I'm like, wait, is that what I think it is? And I, I guess it is, so we'll get to that soon enough. But yeah, it seems like her doing that has kind of like, gained every monster's attention because they started all running in one particular direction and i don't know where i don't know if they're looking for the heart just like the scraps are which we'll get to them later but i think i think even hewn could feel the pull of it because he's like i don't even know why i'm doing this and he's running through the woods and the guy that was meant to follow uh sung Wan and his daughter ended up like going off on his own and he's attacking some of the monsters and he's kind of got like this metallic thing going i don't know if it's like it looks mm, silvery and metallic like mercury so i don't know if that's what i mean whatever it is it's burning whatever he touches and he's so excited and then lo and behold the protein monster shows up and because uh eon Yu is hiding from them and stuff and then we have hyun essentially single-handedly killing that thing because first and foremost i was like wait this bastard's still alive and you can see he's got the burns on him i'm like we haven't seen you since season one so you've been running amok for a while because once again it's also the thing of uh it's been there was like a once i can't remember now but there is a, 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 a some amount of time skip happening in season two so the fact is, Hugh, it's also kind of a power scaling thing to show you how powerful he is. And he's like slicing this thing up and killing it. And he kills it. It basically explodes his body at the end. Because uh, there's no real power scaling like that in the webtoon to an extent. I mean, there is when it comes to Hewn. But it's like, it's hard to really gauge that because like obviously all these monsters are stronger than other humans. So it's really hard to gauge. But obviously you get moments where like Hewn is pushing himself more and more and giving in more and more to his monster side. But there's real no power scaling. You really don't get into the crazy power scaling until like the very end of the webtoon where it's like, oh, wow, wasn't expecting this to be what. That's where I'm like, if, you've, if you're familiar with the webtoon, I don't know if we're going to get that at the end of this show or not. I wouldn't be surprised if they do something like that, but I have no idea. I don't think, once again, because his constitution with the whole monsterization is way different in the TV show than it is in the webtoons. Still could get their way, just get like a modified version of it, but I don't know. But also, like I said, it's just, it's meant to be a power scaling thing. Like, all the trouble they went through to kill that thing, and, like, Hume single-handedly kills it now. Because also, Hume's not in the same position he was. Like, he, at that point, he didn't have his wing arm. He hadn't fully awakened to be as strong as he is now. And it's like, yeah, it just shows a power scaling. Like, yeah, we got so much trouble killing this thing. We threw everything we had at this thing and still didn't kill it. We, like, rammed a fire truck into it and knocked it into a pit, and it still still didn't die and we burned it and yeah it took hewn literally exploding a thing with his wing and then home dudes look at him like oh are you like us and extends out his hand and hume cuts his hand off and holds it like oh look at this and he's like oh you don't recognize me and he was like yeah remember back when you left with song one yeah i was that dude turning to stone and he slowly remembers he's like can you give me back my hand and hume like tosses it down but he's like i never said i would actually like let you reattach it and he's like all right let's go find um song one obviously he's calling him the name of the body he was initially in when they met in season one but i love that he's just dragging the bastard like oh He's like, just kill me. He's like, no, no, I'm not going to. Like, I will later, but first we're going to go visit him. And just dragging his body the whole way. Even dragging him up damn steps. I'm like, that's super unnecessary. But you're just doing it just to be a bastard. And he's laughing, saying like, oh, you, like the uh, glasses overall dude is laughing. Like, oh, you, you, you know, like he was holding back before, but you'll see, you'll suffer the real ramifications. And Hume like tosses him and it's like, oh no, I'm going to show you like, how the person you respect and follow so much ain't shit you know because he's like the only the, you unluckily chose to be annoying to me because the only thing i care about right now i'm doing is just whatever benefits hewn so you just unfortunately just happen to be the assholes in my way so that's why i'm doing this so 
he manages to get away from Hyun, and I just love Hyun being like, that son of a bitch. It's like, oh, when he catches you, you're screwed. Oh, he's he's going to kill you super hard, probably. But as I said, like, you think you're going to get away, you're getting, like, because he, I don't know if, like, with the mercury and stuff, or, like, whatever, it just kind of melted him to the ground, but obviously Hyun's going to recover, no problem, but, oh, uh, that dude's going to get it so hard uh, when the time comes, so... That's fascinating. At the same time, um, there's a little bit of an exchange between Honey and uh, Chung Siok where she's like asking like about his family. He's like, well, I lost contact with him. She's like, so why are you going back to the stadium? Because he's like, I kind of have nowhere else to go. It's also because Eon Yu's going back. And he's like, yeah, but if you kind of stick with me, I'll take care of you. She's like, oh, so are you proposing to me? He's like, no, no. I mean, and she's just like, ugh. It's like he kind of killed the mood. It was kind of like, I wonder, does she act? I mean, she took an interest in him from the beginning. So... I don't know if she actually has started developing feelings and she actually legitimately does like him or that was just him, her screwing with him a little bit, but whatever the case may be. Either way, Ianyu is struggling with what she saw because it's just like, right, did I ever have a chance? I made this bet, but she feels like it just seems like so impossible to save Hugh now. And if she wants to, and it's like, well, her main reason to go to the stadium is because she's worried like, well, who, like the Hugh that he is right now might just kill everyone right now. So it's like, that's her main motivation for going to try and stop him but she also just doesn't know like right i made this bet to get the hewn i know back but like, is that even possible can i even be in a position to do that so that's where things are on that front then we catch up with the sergeant kim of it all where he uh wakes up because he dozed off probably just like passed out from exhaustion and the monster's still there and then the dude walks out i didn't realize this last episode but i was like wait that's a uke wait what wait that was him because he was like oh thanks for helping me out i was like wait what i did not recognize him with all that damage to his face last episode but it's like yeah because song Wan basically went around and like messed all of them up because he's a he what uh song Wan refers to as scrapes but uh i did not realize that was him which is so interesting because it's all heavily dives into the whole cocoon process, which I've referenced multiple times. It's something straight out of the webtoon, but it was never explored to the extent. Because this is one of the things I was talking about, like, you never get an answer to towards. It happens closer to the end of the series, and it plays a decent part in the end of the series, but you don't get any answers of what it really means. So, Hugh's answering the questions of, like, right, we become, well, we're neo-humans, as, as they say, but it's like... It's a, it's a different circumstance than the other people. How the monster situation normally plays out. Like a... Because uh, Hugh never went through the process. And he's a neo-human. And the same thing for Song Wan. But I guess the argument could be like... Mm, that's why I, it's more of a distinction between like... The full monsterization and neo-humanism. You know? But... Because even Kim asked him at one point, like, what happened to your memories? He's like, well, that's kind of not important. We went through what we needed to go through and became what we needed to become uh, for this, for what's to come. So it's like, right, they're immortal and stuff like that. But it seems like, once again, something that's never answered in a webtoon is it does seem like they can be, begin the process, the rebirth, the, yeah, rebirth process over and over again. It can happen multiple times. It seems like you would think you just go through it once, but apparently not. Now, not unless I'm being an idiot. I was like, I looked up the actor who plays Hugh because he looks so different because his hair is different and he's not wearing his glasses. But I'm like, that is the actor who plays Hugh, right? Because I, I didn't recognize him in the season two finale initially. So that's why I was kind of like, oh, because he doesn't have his glasses because his glasses was found back at the green home, but uh, apartments. But I'm pretty sure looking him up, I'm like, yeah, that looks like Eon Hugh's like actor. So... I think it is him, but that's why I was like, that's why I could confuse me because I was like, oh, so you can go through the cocoon rebirth process multiple times. It seems like the rebirth process while they're inside the cocoon is their most vulnerable. If you kill them while they're like that, you, you nip the whole process in the bud. I don't know what that means for someone who ends up like, I don't know if it's like, even if you've been through the process once before, like, I guess that's the immortality aspect of it. That, yeah, no matter what, you'll always go through the cocoon process over and over and over and over again. But, like, if it gets nipped in the bud, that just stops it dead in its track. So it's kind of like, yeah, you're immortal, but not invulnerable. It kind of becomes that type of uh, distinction, I think. So, 
but yeah, like the neo humans, uh, as Hulk says, like, because uh, Kim was like, "How many of you are there?" He's like, "Well, how many monsters are there?" Like, every monster will eventually go through the uh, the cocoon process, a rebirth process, and become a neo human. It's just a matter of time. So basically, for every human that goes through the monsterization process, they'll go there. So like, basically, this whole world could potentially end up being filled with neo humans when it's all said and done. So these two are kind of sticking together, and I love, like I said, he's he. He takes the photo out from his uh, stuff, but it's like it's unclear on whether like he fully remembers it all or not. But that's the thing; he won't remember Eon Yu when he sees her. Well, maybe by then he will. Uh, kind of plays in like Song Wan's situation too, because like he didn't remember anything until he was switching body from body to body. But he didn't, like I said, he didn't go through the cocoon process. That was just a natural process of everything he went through made him lose himself. I and mean, it kind of fits befitting considering he's hopping from body to body. So when it's all said and done, I'm curious to see what, well, they're going to end up going back to the stadium. So that's going to be interesting because once again, every storyline is converging at the stadium. Hyun's on his way there. Eun Yu uh, with Chung, Seok, and uh, Hani is going there. Everything that's going down at the stadium in itself too. So all roads are converging there. Because Tak got revealed to be symptomatic. He kind of had to reveal himself when um, Sam Wong showed up and killed the scrapes that were out front looking for their kin. And they were outside and the dude that was with him was going to get punished. So Tak grabbed it and kind of revealed himself like, yeah, I'm symptomatic. So I have free reign to run the, go about the place, don't I? Because that's why I was unclear of like, because he's in charge of the place, he's kind of like the human representative. So that's why he was out and about. But I thought they knew, but it's like, no, this is his first time revealing that to everyone. And Sung Wan's the one that explains the whole scrapes, scraps thing to him. It's like, yeah, uh, cut these people up and then put their bodies in that cell and then proceeded to like, while they were in their cocoons, ended up killing them because he's like yeah they came to me at that facility and were pestering me about their kin so, so i killed every single one of them and it's just kind of he's annoyed by it which is so interesting too considering like he's kind of trying to do the same thing in a, in a in a similar capacity uh i mean not looking for the kin and what they're looking for but more so like he's kind of rebirthing himself trying to use his daughter as a um as a new vessel because uh, I, I brought it up. I was like, I couldn't remember why he was trapped in this body. It wasn't something Hune did. It does seem like it was like uh, Siaku. Like he, like him. Or maybe it was just the accident in general. Like something, not having full control of the body. Whatever the case may be, he's locked in his body. And that was also a conversation that uh, Glasses overalls dude was trying to have that conversation with Hune about. But Tuck does go to talk to Dr. Lim because he's trying to... It's like, well, you can't just, like, easily slash up these uh, special infectees. You have to, like, uh, get them while... You have to kill them while they're in a weakened state. So and he's also experimenting with what, what fragments of, like, a cocoon or egg that he had in that suitcase. And he's poking at it. It's like, oh, probably give them an edge in the grand scheme of things because the whole point is supposed to be helping talk become an, a special infectee so he can deal with all of this at the same time that's all going down yi Kyung is still uh tracking her daughter and everything which is actually really sweet she came across the kids who were uh who took uh seong yu's uh baseball and she got it back for him which was really sweet because it's like it, and obviously as she was walking people in the hall were avoiding her it's like understandable like they don't really know her constitution but they know like hey the monsters are resonating with her even saying like oh like this is my daughter so it's like yeah she's got to be a monster so even if she wasn't because she's the daughter of a monster like even if they don't know her full circumstance the leaders take the leader of all this song wants taking an interest in her so we're not going near her so when it's all said and done, she runs into Yi Kyung, and they have this, I think, the first real heart-to-heart -heart they've ever really had, where she's asked, she's like, I'm sorry for what happened. And it's like, and even her asking, like, how did you become human again? Like, you were about to become a monster. And it's like, did you want me to become a monster? And for her daughter, it was like, yes, because as a human, you would never understand me. She's like, I even, I felt like you hated me. And it's like, in her own way, Yi Kyung was trying to protect her because she was so different. But even Yi Kyung recognizes, like, I wasn't, 
I did. I tried so hard to not recognize how special and different you are. I didn't want to recognize it, and I'm sorry how much pain I caused you. But like, I do love you, and it's like we can start over. There's so many people here, but you and me, we can live on the outside. We can start over. And Yuki Yuki daughter is like, I don't know, and she's like, Well, I'll wait here, and when you make up your mind, come and find me. And now she's debating to herself like whether or not she wants to go with her mom. And it's actually after. Seong Yu found the baseball. He went looking for her and is like, right, you should go with your mom. He's like, as someone who lost his mom, doesn't talk about it, but also, you know, he also lost his mom. He lost his dad. He lost three different adults who eventually like, kind of took him in. Like, Myung Do Sik was looking after him as well as uh, Gil Siop, which there's an element of makes it even sadder, like seeing Gil Siop again, like there, because of the whole memory thing. We'll get to it in a second, but. Just kind of an interesting difference between a webtoon and once again this will go back to season one so it's a moot point but just just we got the protein monster back this episode the ir irony thing is in the show gil Siop just dies of his own illness if i remember correctly uh but in the webtoon the protein monster is what kills him in the when the protein monster is about to slam its fist down he gets pushed out of the way by hewn in the tv show if i remember correctly but in the webtoon hewn doesn't get to him in time and he ends up getting squashed it's uh yeah it's real because i by that time i'd already seen the tv show so i expected that and so when he got killed in the webtoon i was like what it kind of threw me i was like oh shit i yeah i was like oh that's a major difference in the tv show but either way that the reason why i'm bringing that up it's kind of a moot point but it's just like oh just interesting that that flashback happened in the same episode that the protein monster came back there's no connection in that regard in the tv show but webtoon wise it's like oh that now having the context of webtoon i'm like oh that that hits a little different but the reason why that baseball was so important to uh seong yu is because it has the metal in it that gil siop had given um, Yu Seung, it's like, right, for protecting someone, and it's like, that's why the baseball was so important, it was just like a placeholder to keep it, because he probably knew, like, if he kept it out and about, someone would take it if it's, it disguises a baseball, no one's gonna fuck with it, it's just gonna look like a baseball, who'd want that but something shiny, like a metal like that like, someone someone would definitely steal that off of you, so, it was meant for that and he ended up giving it to giving it to Yu Seung's daughter, because it's like, I don't I might not ever see you again. This might be the last time we ever see each other, which I think it's interesting that guy was overhearing. We never saw anything come about that, but maybe that's why uh, Sung Wan is able to find them later is because he like ratted them out just for the purposes of like, oh, trying to be in Sung Wan's good graces. Cause it's like, it is interesting that Sung Wan would just happen to go there. Like how would he know? So it had to be like home dude who ratted them out trying to get into Sung Wan's good graces. And I think on some level, when Seong Yu looks at Yukion's daughter, I'm purposely keep doing that until we get to the part where I discuss her name and stuff like that. Um, it's like, right, go with your mom because she will be the one to be able to tell you your name and everything. But I think that's also why he looks at her like it's just a reminder, you know, of his sister no longer being here. So I think that's also even more reason why he wants her to have it. It's almost like it gets to be carried on with like. Uh, someone he considers a friend and it's almost like i don't know like his sister gets carried on in that way but i think he also looks at her and sees a little bit of his sister but ultimately um yikiong leaves with her daughter and partway through the tunnel they're like she's like do i have a name it's like of course you actually have a name but before she can say anything song Wan shows up and for her it's like regardless of everything it's still the thing of you are you're not someone is dead it's like but i'm right here i'm sorry you know i i went to the green homes initially because i was looking for you and it's just I, i'm here and i i've missed you so much i was scared the entire time they were hugging i was like he's gonna stab her he's gonna kill her isn't he but she made the move first but he, even he admitted like right you could have just kept up with the lie like he yeah he doesn't care about her maybe at one point in time the man that he was is so long it's long dead so she doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things you would think you want to keep up the pretenses at least a little bit more in front of your daughter but nope he's hurting yikiong and doesn't matter and yikiong's yelling for her daughter to run and she does and but yikiong is just like doing everything she can to stop him shooting him in the head like, i even love they're on the ground and she's still trying to shoot him in the face gets her fucking arm sliced off i'm like jesus she can't catch her break it's sad that like all this had to happen she came back to being human she found her daughter again made peace with her they were in a good place again this was gonna be their fresh start and it all goes to shit and 
she finally tells her daughter her real name. It's like, your name is Yisu, so go, please go. And he deals the final blow to her. And that moment, Yisu's trying everything to bring her mom back. It's like, no. And she's trying to turn her mom into a monster, thinking it'll save her life again. But it's like, it, it won't. Because either what Hune did is irreversible. Or something like, if you've seen the TV show Van Helsing, once someone has been cured of the vampirism thing, they can never be turned back. So I'm curious if it's something like that. Or whether, or whether it's just because she was already dead by the time, so there was no saving her. At least she was dying previously. Now she's already dead, so there's no saving her. It could be a combination of the two. So, like, that's heartbreaking. You were hoping that someone would be able to get there in time, but it's like, they're going to find out that Yi Qiong is dead, you know, after all of this. And Song Wan's got his perfect vessel. So, once again, all the storylines are converging in this moment. Not less, well, because she's not... She went through the monster, but she never fully went through the monsterization process. So the cocoon situation might not be applicable for her under these circumstances. Maybe at one point in time it could have been, but where things are now, no. Because she's been, like, the monsterization was stopped for every reason. So I'm curious to see where the hell all of this ends up taking us going forward into the next episode. But really, that's all I wanted to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy. Be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.